what we're going to be going over here is manufacturing overhead variances and we're going to be looking at the fixed overhead portion of our manufacturing overhead variances here and it's going to be based on a standard costing system using a flexible budget okay so we'll just start out by looking at it in table form here so when we're talking about variance analysis really we're th dealing with three different budgets or three different amounts here we start out with some standard or static amount here and that we determine from our budget at the beginning of the period here and then at the end of the period we're going to have our actual results coming in for these variant are for our, in this case we're looking at the fixed overhead amounts here and then based on the actual amounts here and the ending of the period in the beginning of the period standard or static amounts we can determine the flexible amount here and uh, at the end of the period here and then difference between the actual flexible and static amounts are going to be our variances here so the first thing we have to start with is the standard or the static amount and that we're really taking the budgeted quantities allowed times the budgeted cost or price and that's for the in this case for the fixed overhead here and that when we talk about budgeted quantities and budgeted costs here those are really standards that the company sets for their in this case the overhead that we'll be looking at and it's a standard that they set and it's really the bud what budgeted inputs here but it's really a standard amount amount that's allowed here okay so at the beginning of the period we establish our standard or our static amount here now at the end of the period our actual results come in and those would be based on the actual input quantities times the actual cost or price so those are the actual costs that are incurred now for our flexible amount this is where we take the actual input quantities here that we knew at the end of the period here from our actual results and we multiply those times the budgeted cost or price that we have established based on our standard or our static amount here at the beginning of the period so that's our flexible amount so now we can do our variance analysis between actual flexible and our static amounts okay so let's go down and let's look at what we're talking about here with the fixed overhead again uh, just we're going to have this spending variance here and that's really going to be if factoring everything out here that's taking the actual hours used times the actual fixed overhead rate and that quantity we uh, take the difference from uh, determining that quantity then we subtract from it the standard fixed rate here times some denominator hours here and that's really the total budgeted uh, fixed overhead hours that you're looking at or the denominator based on some in case labor rate that we look at so that quantity actual hours used times the actual fixed overhead rate and you subtract from it the standard quantity or the standard fixed rate here times those total budgeted in this case direct labor hours so that's our spending variance and that's the difference between our actual and flexible amounts here and then the difference between our flexible and static amounts or our standard amounts here would be the volume variance and that's simply taking those denominator hours or as total budgeted in this case direct labor hours and subtracting it from it or the difference between those and our standard hours allowed for the product here or for our budget here that difference times the standard fixed rate here okay so that takes care of our volume variance here so we got our spending variance between our actual and our flexible amounts and our volume variance is between our flexible and our static amounts okay so we'll go on and we'll be looking at a problem but before we go over that let's just go over and let's look at this diagram here so really what you're dealing with is these total profit variances here but we're what we're going to be looking at is that over our overhead variance so that would be under our in this case our flexible budget flexible budget variance and that's the difference between our uh, broken up between our sales price variance and our unit cost variances and under our unit cost variances we've got our direct materials our direct labor and then our overhead variances so in this case we're going to be dealing with the uh our fixed overhead variance here so under overhead variances we've got our variable overhead variances and then we have our fixed overhead variances but we'll be dealing with our fixed overhead variance okay so we'll continue on with our example what we're going to be going over here is manufacturing overhead costs and variances but we're going to be specifically looking at the fixed overhead portion of this our manufacturing overhead here and we're going to be calculating the variances for this fixed overhead and our example is going to be based on a standard costing system with a flexible budget. 
So let's look at it in terms of a department here within a manufacturing plant. And we're going to be working with uh, the fixed overhead here for this department. So what I've shown here, I've got it laid out in T-account form, and we're going to look at the flow of this fixed overhead through these T-accounts. We're going to make the calculations here to determine those variances. So conceptually what we do here, we start with the actual fixed cost here that we have for the period, and let's just say it's on a monthly basis here. And then those fixed costs are going to flow into a manufacturing overhead control account here. And I'm going to show it as a fixed overhead control account here because that's specifically what we're looking at. But it would go into this manufacturing overhead control account and then it would flow into our work and process control account. But it's going to flow in at the standard cost in this case. So what's going to happen here? The standard cost that we have is going to vary. Uh, it's going to be different here than the actual fixed overhead costs we have for the period. So the difference between the standard that we have set for the period here and our actual costs are going to be divided between, in this case, the spending variance here for the fixed overhead and also what they call the production volume variance here for the fixed overhead. Okay, so let's before we get into our calculations here, Let's first go, on, go down here and look at, we'll start our, with our reference key here. So I'm showing in red here the uh, letters here for those calculations that we're going to make. And uh, the SVOR, that would stand for our standard variable overhead rate, but we're not using it in this example. Then we get down to SFOR, that stands for the standard fixed overhead rate. AHU is the actual hours used. SHA, standard hours allowed. And then DH, that's our total budgeted direct labor hours for the period. And those are referred to as the denominator hours here because they uh, fit into the denominator here on our formula here for calculating our fixed over, uh, standard fixed overhead rate. Okay, so how would we go about calculating our standard fixed overhead rate? Well, basically what you do, you take your total fixed cost that you budgeted for the period, in this case for the department, and you to divide it by the total direct labor hours that you budgeted for the period. And that's all on budgeted amounts here. So you take, uh, you divide your total fixed cost here for the period here based on a budgeted amount here divided by, again, a total direct labor hours, and that's going to give you your standard fixed overhead rate on a per hour basis. So for say for our example, we're, our total fixed cost was set at 240000 and we determined our uh, budgeted total labor rate that we're going to go through this department would be 4,800 hours. So the division here is going to give us $50 per hour here would be our standard fixed overhead cost. So uh, for every direct labor hour that you spend, $50 here would be assigned to your fixed overhead rate or fixed overhead cost. Okay, so looking at it in terms of, say we have a labor rate here, a standard of $15 per hour. So divide that into your uh, standard fixed overhead rate of $50 per hour. So you're going to have a 333% here uh, of your of times your uh, labor rate here is going to equal your uh, fixed cost for the, for the, for the for our calculation here. So you look at it in terms of uh, uh, calculating it here in terms of direct labor. Say, for example, you have $7 spent here in direct labor. You take it times 333%, which is your uh, percentage here for your stick standard fixed overhead rate. 333% times the $7 direct labor hour is going to give you $23 here in fixed overhead cost that you have. So that's basically how it works. Usually you work with some percentage here when you're talking about those standard fixed overhead rates. It's some percentage times your direct, whatever direct labor dollars you have, that'll give you your uh, fixed overhead that you'll be looking at. So that's how it works here as a percentage. Okay, so let's go up and let's look at our problem here. So starting with our fixed overhead, we start with our actual cost here. And our actual cost in this example is $242,500 for the month that we're looking at in this department. Then that's, that's going to flow into our manufacturing overhead control account here at $242,500. And then I made one other calculations here. And that's for going to be for this volume variance that we're going to be looking at. So we got to, and that's going to be $240,000. That's simply taking uh, your standard fixed overhead rate, $50 per hour, times your, de, uh, your 
total budget direct labor hours and those were we call that denominator hours here that we have calculated at four thousand eight hundred hours so fifty dollars the standard fix over rate times those forty eight hundred dollar hours uh, 4,800 hours, excuse me, is $240,000. Okay, so now we take and we move into our working process where we're going to record our standard cost here based on for those fixed costs. So that is simply taking your standard fixed overhead rate, $50 per hour, times your standard hours allowed. That's our standard rate that we're looking at for this, uh, this month here in the department, and that is $4,000. So that gives us our standard cost. $50 times 4,000 gives us our standard cost for our fixed overhead for the month here is $200,000. Now we're going to make now we're going to compare that to our actual cost here, 242,500, and we can also compare it to the 240,000 here based on our denominator hours here that we have for the period to determine our uh, volume variance. So first off, let's look at our a fixed overhead spending variance and that okay let's look at that here so we that is where we take our actual uh, fixed cost here for the period and then we would subtract our budgeted amount here based on our standard fixed overhead rate fifty dollars per hour times what we have budgeted those denominator hours here there's total direct labor hours here forty eight hundred hours that's going to give us two hundred and forty thousand so the difference here, 242,500 is, is actual hours is greater than what we budgeted here uh, at 240,000 hours. So this is where we're going to get the spending variance. It's going to be an unfavorable variance here of $2,500, simply because our actual amount that we have spent here for the period in a fixed overhead is greater than our budgeted amount. So it's unfavorable by the difference here, $2,500. Okay, so that takes care of our spending variance here. Now let's move over to our production volume variance. And that's really based on looking at our calculations here where we have taken our standard uh, cost for the period here of $200,000 and compare it to our, denom our denominator, what we, our direct labor, total direct labor hours that we're looking at of 4,800. So we're really looking at the difference between the 4,000 hours here as a standard cost here and the 4,800 hours here based on our total direct labor that we budgeted. Okay, so let's go and look at that. So to our production volume variance, we're going to calculate that to be 40,000 here is unfavorable. And that's simply taking, again, our denominator hours here total direct labor hours that we budgeted for the period of 4,800 and subtract that from the standard hours allowed here. That's for our standard. We only allow 4,000 for the period. So the difference is 800 hours here times standard fixed overhead rate here of $50. So there we come up with our production volume variance, as they call it, debited here for 40,000 as unfavorable because what we our total direct labors that we budgeted for the period here were greater than the standard hours allowed here. Okay, so that gives us our production volume variance. So now we've, so our total variance, let's just look at it here. So our total variance, the 2,500 here, unfavorable spending variance, plus the 40,000 here, our production volume variance, as they call it, equals $42,500. So, and you can see that up above here. That, and it's unfavorable. Everything was unfavorable here, as it turned out in our problem. So $42,500 unfavorable. And you can see that looking at our T accounts up here. So our actual cost of 40, 242500 compare it to the 200000 here uh, based for our standard cost in our working process here. So you can see the difference is that $42,500. Okay, so that's how that works. So we can also look at, or we looked at why we calculated this denominator hours here times that standard fixed overhead rate of 240,000 we came up. Compare that to our, our work in process, our standard cost here, 200,000. So we got a $40,000 difference, unfavorable again, of 40,000 here. So debited here for 40,000. Now just looking at our debits and credits here to see how everything balances out. So taking our debit here at 200,000 here for our based on our standard cost here and then add to it our debit here 40,000 in our 
production volume variance. That brings us up to 240000 And then we'd have to also add our debit here and our fixed overhead spending variance of 2500 So that brings us up to exactly what we have here in actual cost at $242,500. Okay, so that's how we handle these uh, uh, using our T-account approach here along with our the equations we went through here to determine our spending variance and our volume variance. And that was, again, simply the difference here. We looked at our actual fixed overhead cost for the period and compared it to the standard uh, fixed uh, overhead cost that we had allowed for the period. So you can see that that's how we got those two different variances, split between our fixed overhead spending variance and our production volume variance. And that, just understand that. So again, maybe just understand this 4,800, I went, I've got it shown here, this 4,800 hours, those were the total direct, uh, direct labor hours here that we budgeted for the period. And we use that in both our fixed spending variance here for our comparison uh, to determine our sp fixed overhead spending variance. And we also use it in our production volume variance here. Spending variances were va based on the actual uh, fixed overhead costs we have for the period uh, compared to the standard fixed overhead rate times that $4,800 budget, uh, 4,800 hours that we budgeted for the period. So we took our actual uh, fixed overhead cost here, compared it to the budgeted amount, the total number of hours that we budgeted, and that gave us our fixed overhead spending variance. And then our volume variance, that simply became the difference in those hours that we looked at. Those uh, total uh, budgeted hours here, the 4,800 that we have, uh, based, uh, less our uh, standard hours that we determined would be our standard for the period of 4,000 here. So we only plan to spend 4,000 and our, we only, our standard was set up, excuse me, to spend 4,000 here. We budgeted 4,800 total direct labor hours. The DIFFUS gave us that production volume variance. Okay, so the total between your, and, and make a point here, talking about unfavorable and favorable here. Uh, when we have an unfavorable variance, we debit it here. And versus if we have a favorable variance, that is a favorable variance is where you're, you're, you're actually spending less than your budgeted here, then you'd have a favorable variance. In this case, we were spending more here. Actual expenses here were more than what we had budgeted, so we debited here as an unfavorable amount. And then same with our production volume variance. If had we uh, favorable, we would have credited here because uh, we would have actually had a greater, it was had our standard hours allowed would have been greater than our uh, direct, direct labor or direct denominator hours that we're looking at here. And then in that case, it would have been uh, a favorable a credit here. Okay, so you can understand the difference between uh, unfavorable and favorable. Unfavorable, you're over budget. Favorable, you'd be under budget. And then again, just the difference here between our fixed overhead spending variance here plus our production volume variance should explain the difference between our standard uh, cost that we have for budgeted for the period versus our actual cost we have for the period. Okay, so that'll uh, summarize it here for this fixed overhead where we looked at the just the fixed overhead portion of our manufacturing overhead.